Punto Evo is Fiat's replacement for the Grande Punto and is so called because it has evolved. It's got a redesigned face, new rear lights and new styling tweaks inside. Anyway, that aside and far more interesting is what's going on under the bonnet. You see, this family of Puntos has been designed to be cleaner and to conform to new European emissions standards and Fiat has taken this project very seriously indeed. It has now got stop-start systems across the range, environmentally friendly multi-jet two diesel engines, and the technology that has got the motor industry in a right tiz of excitement, multi-air, as fitted here. Multi-air is the Fiat Group's high-tech petrol engine. Instead of allowing air in through a valve controlled by the camshaft, the system takes in air electronically, controlling the flow better and saving energy usually used up in rotating the cams. Ultimately, it's a process of getting more power from less fuel. Now, Fiat claims that this has got 10% more power, uses 10% less fuel and has cut CO2 emissions by, guess what, yeah, 10%. And Fiat is so proud of its multi-air technology that it's put a patent on it. This is the top of the range 1.4 litre sporting and perhaps it is the ultimate compromise. It's got big 17 inch alloys, a honeycomb grille and a red spot on the boot badge which says that it is the most hardcore model. And its clever engine gives it a 0-62 time of 8.5 seconds. It'll do 50 miles to the gallon and its CO2 emissions are 129 grams per kilometre. All those figures are superior to Ford's Fiesta ZTEC S, which is this car's main rival. Plus, it's got more grunt and thrust too, with 135 brake horsepower, thanks to a little turbocharged engine, and 152 pound-foot of torque. In all, there are five different trim levels, five different engines, and prices range from 11 grand all the way up to 15 and a half thousand pounds, and that puts it right in the mix with Ford's Fiesta, Renault's Clio, and Citroen's new C3. As much as I really like the stitching and the design of the gear lever, which means that you can do just fingertip changes, the actual gear change itself is a little bit vague. It could do with having a shorter throw to it, so it would feel sportier. Under really hard acceleration from the off, then the traction control system gets a good workout. But once I ease off the throttle, then the power delivery is nice and smooth. So I'm doing 50 miles an hour in fourth gear, revs are at 2,500 RPM, boot the throttle, bit of a delay, turbo kicks in and then powers me onwards just like a normally aspirated car, so no big bursts of turbo, which is a little disappointing. The gears are incredibly long, so it just feels like you're increasing the revs and they never, never stop. So 4,000 RPM, 5,000 RPM. 6,000 RPM change. The revs just keep on going and it, it never seemed to run out of revs. The chassis is good, there's not a huge amount of body roll, but it's all let down by the steering. So second gear, right-hander, turn in. I wanted the car to sit down and for me to feel that I've gotten through a corner. I just can't feel what the wheels are doing and what the surface is like on the road. It's a sense that's lacking, sadly. It's well equipped with anti-lock brakes, traction control with hill holder, cornering fog lights, driver's knee airbag and EcoDrive computer software, which tells you how to drive the most efficiently. All this is standard. And there's the new look dashboard, which makes room for the £275 removable sat-nav. So plenty going for the young Evo. The new Punto is well equipped. It's practical, it looks good, and it comes with that cutting edge multi-air engine. And in this 1.4 sporting guise, it's also cheaper, more frugal, and more powerful than the Ford Fiesta ZTEC S. It is quite a package, but when it comes to the steering and the gearbox, it plays second fiddle to the Ford.